<laughs> Let's see. How do you in audacity extend <laughs> silence? Yep. So, so. <laughs> Uh, it's really been bothering me that uh, Glenn's video has been so out of sync, more or less, the entire recording. It was some glitch in the early days. I don't know. I don't really, for you, it, I've seen Hovard's stick and then all three of us froze for a while, mm-hmm. but the audio sounded okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it, mm-hmm. it, more or less, it feels uh, like you're on a loop or something like that. It is like you're put on a recording just to look like you're there. Because it... <laughs> It's really off. It was when uh, I no just, words have, and they were lobotomizing people. And you were just <laughs> laughing your ass off at the video, in the video for me. That was kind of kind of distracting. <laughs> well, I I just don't look at Glenn. That's the easy fix. Um, and I I can't really see that the video is lagging, but because he's so grainy that it it looks like the face on. <laughs> the Doom game, like the pixelated <laughs> character in, uh, like, uh, all right, <laughs> yeah, that one. Okay, all I right, can see how this see. is going tonight. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to send you a picture. I'm not going to look at a little grainy man. Yeah, that's how I look here as well. <laughs> yeah. And it, it does say on all of us, actually, that the, the, the video quality is better in... Uh, post or something so yeah that doesn't really matter about the video quality does it <laughs> no i don't care actual recording is yeah. in higher quality yeah no question is do we have enough for a half pint i feel we uh we can scrape the the bottom of the barrel some pass. more i think <laughs> <laughs> i thought the main i thought the main went pretty well yeah. better than i expected it to do tonight to be fair <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's just a few things I want to edit out, and then it's going to yeah. be press yeah. play. So, yeah. Just lost some nice. speed at some points. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, it was fine. Going back to your mischievous person at work that is you, KJ, have you ever. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever do anything like that as a younger person, or still now? Nothing like that. But I. Then that's mainly because I never thought of it before. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I. I I was kind of a, a sneaky, sneaky asshole when I was <laughs> growing up doing those kind of things. Yeah. yeah. Now you're just an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just as I nah. took a sip of water. <laughs> I try to be sneaky about it now as well, but yeah, with age comes, you don't really care. <laughs> when, um, when I was at college quite a few years ago, me and another lad... There was about six stories to the college, and um, me and another lad stole every button that turned on the hand dryers in the entire college. <laughs> so no one could turn the hand dryers on. <laughs> <laughs> For reasons I still don't understand, but it was hilarious at the time. <laughs> was there some alcohol involved in this? No, no, that was just perfectly sober. <laughs> It was probably during the uh, maths part of the uh, learning to be an engineer at the time. We didn't really yeah. enjoy that. <laughs> then you need some distractions. Yeah. <laughs> you must have caused some mischief, Havard. Yeah. Anything um, you can talk about? It's so much. <laughs> I, I can't really uh, pick one subject. Um, we did do a lot in uh, like primary and secondary school and then... At uni as well, we did a few things. Um, I mean, we never did something that hurt anyone in any sense of the way. But one of the fun things we discovered at uni, of course, we, the engineers, we had a, a separate part on campus where only we were allowed because you had the workshop and so on there. So we could actually stash alcohol and then we could have pre-parties and after parties there. And of course, the... Uh, the local pub which was connected to the university they didn't allow you to bring your own alcohol of course but it was on the same campus so we could actually go (laughs) from the pub and then uh, have a a bit of a stiffer drink uh, in the workshop and then go back again if the party was a bit dull Um, and we realized that of course all over the university there were these printers uh, or combined printers scanners 
uh, where you you could basically press print on your computer and you could use your student card on any one of those to actually get the printout. And of course, they also have a scanning function where you can scan something and send it as an email to someone. And usually, we have that at our office now, and it's set up that you have to use your card uh, and then you can send an email, but that, of course, will tell you who sent it. But the printers on our university wasn't set up like that. So you only needed your card to get your prints out, but if you were scanning something, you could just punch in a random email address and press send and the only sender would be the name of that (laughs) printer with no trace of whoever sent it so we made drawings and i I think someone sat on the faceplate of a scanner at some point and (laughs) sent the pictures to someone (laughs) so that's uh well if someone is listening here and uh (laughs) <laughs> have some pictures laying around and feel free to just <laughs> it's not the people that receive the pictures it's the next person that used the scanner you've got to apologize to <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's some smudge on my diploma that I scan I don't really got pink some eye from... effects got pink eye oh, from reading a... whatever he scans <laughs> yeah I think uh, it's a brilliant. It, it's it's a sketch, but uh, it's a Norwegian comedian who uh, she went into uh, the copying room of a business, and then of course she met the guy that was in there before her, and then of course she's scanning some documents, and then she does what everyone has done at some point. Well, what if I put my face on the the copying machine and just press copy, and then. She got more and more rambunctious with the copier and putting her tongue out and making all kind of faces. And then while she was getting out to leave, she took all the copies with her and then started looking through them. But the last copy was left there from the guy before her and he was scanning his nuts. <laughs> so yeah, I should probably apologize. But all that being said, I was not the one sitting on it, but I, I might have been the one who pressed send. <laughs> I mean, that's what you should do. Have those scans printed already, so you just can drop it in the printed folders. You don't have to take your pants down and put them there and walk out. And see the next person finding it, wondering whose balls are these. Yeah. And, and the, fu- the fun thing, there, there wasn't a lot of people using those scanners. And then, of course, there is a list of the like the 10 recently used email address. So I, th- I think there was one guy in our class uh, who, I mean, he was always on that top 10 list because nobody was using them. So every time we went past it, I mean, if somebody had uh, like a lunchbox or anything, you could find that you can fit on there and it's like, <laughs> press send. And of course, that was a running gag. And he understood <laughs> quite quickly who was the usual suspect. So uh, I did. I, I don't think he used many weeks to just uh, deduce uh, <laughs> who was behind this. So, what you got coming up this week? What are you working on, guys? Oh, yeah. oh, I think I'm sounds gonna... interesting. Well, well, well. <laughs> I mean, ex from what we already <laughs> talked about. <laughs> I think I'm yeah. going to procrastinate a bit more by cleaning the workshop. Actually, proper putting everything away yeah uh, because i mean part of it my, my wife's bike uh, broke i mean oh, the, the tire blew up uh, the back tire so it's been standing in the workshop more or less the entire winter so i'm <laughs> moving it around and around and she actually <laughs> fixed it this uh this weekend so now it's ready to go outside again because now it's outside weather for the bicycle so i get some part of it uh free and also, I, I I gave her a wheelbarrow. Uh, wheelbarrow, it's called. Uh, you old romantic, you. Yeah, uh, for her <laughs> uh, Valentine's. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Val- Val- Valentine's. No, it was uh, just her name day. Um, because she's been complaining that ours are is broken. So then she got a new one. And that's been <laughs> laying around in the workshop as well, waiting to be assembled. Uh, but she did that uh, this weekend as well. So. I'm looking forward to getting all the surfaces back to actually do some work. But I don't think I will get any work done. But I will do a cleanup instead. And, and <laughs> prepare get for everything. work. Yeah, prepare for work. That's what I will do. <laughs> I actually managed to not take on a project this week, <laughs> uh, which 
I guess is a it's more of a feat than anything. Um, of course, I'm in the market for an electric bike, and I've kind of decided on one that is on sale. But then I started thinking. I mean, I could build it myself <laughs> because I've seen the parts as kits, and then of course I could buy a bit cooler bike and then just pick the parts that I really want because you can get the the more beefier motors which is yeah. not legal here in Norway but as long as you're not being a dick then nobody will check so I started summing up I'm like okay that bike I like all right that's the price and then okay I need a motor and then I need a kit and then I need a battery and started summing it up all right I could I could do this as a project and also make a YouTube video out of it and then come a few hundred bucks under if I were to buy it but then I realized shit uh, I didn't take VAT into account <laughs> so it's going to end up costing just the same as uh, buying a, a bike and then of course you have the warranty and you are fairly certain that the brakes and everything is in line with the power of the bike which it probably wouldn't if i crammed the biggest <laughs> engine i could find into the cheapest bike i could get away buying and the reason for getting it is is because you can then hook the trailer up to it and my wife also have a bike and then we can actually make family outings uh, because there are really nice bike paths up in the woods here but of course on a self-built overpowered <laughs> bike with your kids in the back <laughs> Maybe not. So I, I went on the. I, I don't think I'll buy it. <laughs> just buy a motocross bike instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah you could. But Hang I mean, kids. <laughs> the, ele the, the electric ones are extremely oh, yeah, dirty so, petrol. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But then, oof, the noise and all the people are gonna be uh, giving you the. The mean eye. So, yeah, no. And having the kids in the trailer behind it as well. <laughs> and of course, I, I know what would have happened. Of course, uh, it's a. Uh, if you get the hub motor, then you can, all right, you can do the hub on both the front and back wheel. So you could have an all wheel drive bike with twice <laughs> the power. And you could probably go like a uh, hundred miles an hour. And uh, it could probably pull a <laughs> semi -tra trailer or something like so yeah but then you need the a separate trailer on the bike for the battery to be able to actually to produce the correct amperage at the level you needed to deliver so yeah it would have been a big project by the time yeah, i got around a couple of years at least. just made it. two wheel drive sound so much yeah. more interesting by calling it all wheel drive <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's what I get from. I, I have been driven Subaru for many years, and they call it all-wheel drive. Sounds much better. All seven wheels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know a guy who um, did his own electric bike just with a conversion kit, but he managed to pimp his up and make it go faster. I'm not quite sure how he did that, but he used a really old style bike. You know that he picked up for like twenty quid. So we had this electric, yeah. really steampunk-looking bike. It looked really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, as a project, it would be crazy fun, I think. And, of course, I thought about buying a bike. But as you said, if you go on an online marketplace, they are giving away these old yeah. junkyard bikes. And, uh... and that was like the the, the one guy at Skapar Festivalen who took old computer batteries and I mean, filled the frame, more or less, with batteries. So we had, like... Yeah, what was it like a hundred hours of drive time or something oh, wow. like that? It, it looked more or less insane. Yeah, it was something ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> if something happened with that, that's a really interesting fire hazard. <laughs> yeah, but then again, all the battery placement of any electric bike is between yeah. your legs. So, I mean, uh, you will get fairly quickly <laughs> off the bike if uh, it starts smoking from the battery <laughs> compartment. How did he figure out how? Did he? Could he charge them up all off one thing, or did he have to charge them all separately? Because they all must have been slightly different, surely. I think it could be. I mean, they're, they're all the same kind of cells, so uh, okay. if you just hook them up correctly, it's, it shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't be. It's I mean, full of every, confidence, doesn't it, when KJ says shouldn't be a problem? Yeah. <laughs> More or less everything is powered yeah. by those, what, what's it called, the 18650? Yeah. 60? Yeah. Is it something uh, like that? Yeah, something like that's that, yeah. in everything more or less. <laughs> so you can get them pretty pretty cheaply. KJ's power in the capital of Sweden and <laughs> should be okay. <laughs> yeah, well that's <laughs> 
I say that a lot in my, in my <laughs> day job, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably something like this. <laughs> but that being said, I think it was my cousin. He had like a, a three-wheeled bike, but the adult version, uh, which he got for a, his balance wasn't all that. <laughs> and uh, of course, if you can get one of those, then you can get three wheels on. And I do see that they actually sell hub motors for both three and five thousand watts. So you could get you can get a pretty decent engine setup and of course as a, a tricycle it also have the basket on the back between the rear wheels which is actually a big empty battery yeah. compartment uh, so um, I'm thinking if you could have a tricycle maybe you just put a proper engine on it you've got enough room haven't you I um, mean what's a, what's a proper engine, engine? <laughs> what's wrong with two I Tesla mean, electrics you're, you're... <laughs> no absolutely nothing but <laughs> <laughs> it's much easier to get a two-stroke yeah. engine off I mean, something yeah. else, isn't it? And strap it on your bike as opposed to... It yeah. would be cheaper, I'm guessing, but it would never produce the no. same yeah. torque yeah, yeah. and delivery as the electric engines. Well, maybe because it's a tricycle, you could go a little well, bit yeah. bigger on your petrol engine then. <laughs> maybe you're just thinking too small. Yeah, old Chevy V8. <laughs> R1 engine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or a jet engine, that's a... Yeah, there's a lot yeah, they, of They look like they run a little hot for my liking. Yeah, some of them, and they are <laughs> yeah. <getting> loud. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, if you have the trailer behind with your kids in it, it's like they're going to be medium to rare by the time you get out of the driveway. <laughs> so, yeah. It's just getting home and leaving it to cool for a couple of hours before you can put it in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> Well, talking old school, this is something completely different, but I was thinking the next time I'm ordering some parts, I'm I'm going to order some uh, steel ball bearings for a project. But then I also thought, well, they do sell these medical rubber bands, which are brilliant for making like uh, yeah. slingshots. And I haven't made a slingshot since I was a kid. And now I can make a proper one on the CNC and plywood and... Uh, with some proper rubber bands, not the crappy one you tie together from your uh, your mother's uh, sewing box, <laughs> yeah. like in the olden days. So you can make something that is uh, proper uh, menacing. So I'm thinking that maybe this summer, if uh, just to shoot some uh, old yeah. paint cans and so on in the in the garden, you can, um, be fun. you can actually get some pretty deadly proper catapult elastic nowadays. About it's come on a little. Yeah, yeah. my, my uh, second ever YouTube video. I've is seen a that you get those for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and I probably need some I mean the old boring gravity for the guillotine I think it needs to be beefed up a bit so uh, some hefty rubber yeah. bands to, to bring the blade up to speed that would be Just nice to be sure. <laughs> gotta send it through the table <laughs> it sounds like the most dangerous thing to make that does a guillotine yeah and of course I've, there is something about it that's it's tantalizing because it's also a bit like scary because once you lift yeah. that blade up and it will take <laughs> your hand off if you just stick it in there uh, or uh, at least your fingers and of course you have to fiddle around with it so uh, it's a, it's a dangerous yeah. build I think um, but yeah that's gonna happen this year I have the and I don't know how I'm gonna build it I found the. There is actually a guillotines.net <laughs> webpage. One guy has dedicated his life to guillotines, but there are some decent drawings there. So, uh, yeah, I haven't planned on how it's going to look or how I'm going to build it, but I have all the details on the video ready because I, I want to know how the final shots are <laughs> going to be. So uh, what? it's going to be a, a nudge in the side what to the French. What scale are you going to build it in? Full scale, half scale, tenth? <laughs> one to one. <laughs> <laughs> no, for for it's, sausages uh, and Barbie dolls. I mean, it's uh, th this will be the driving one. So uh, I mean, it's it's uh, one to four, it maybe. Looks like it's cat size guillotine to me. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that! I mean, that video wouldn't only get you banned yeah. from YouTube. That video would get you banned from internet for life. I mean. The internet is beta based on yeah. videos. Yeah. 
running one through a guillotine would yeah, be push, 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 come and get me treats. <laughs> That's how you end the video. <laughs> Just panning off when you hear in the back yeah. and poof and quiet. <laughs> oh. I have a. I mean, you you could swap the. I think there's a the guy who made the RC controlled the children's seat where he put his baby in and then he just clip the video and then he swap it for a doll and <laughs> then he just drives around and of course the the transition was made so bad that you actually see that he's putting a doll in. Uh, I could do that to the cat as well. Uh, just swap to a. a I poor... think you should. <laughs> Like a, a teddy bear or something like that, but then again, you would get all the teddy bear lovers on your back. So there's always someone who loves something. Even yeah. you, KJ. Yeah. <laughs> Even you. I only said that to you because you would have definitely said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Just have to beat me to it. Yeah. Fair point. <laughs> Make it. I, I think there is. I think this television show actually started in Norway. There is a Canadian version, I know, and it's called Don't Do This at Home. And it's basically every season they, they found the house somewhere in Norway that's going to be torn down and they spent a couple of months in the summer just, uh, what would happen if I left the stove on unattended for an entire day? <laughs> or uh, like, mm -hmm. And they end up blowing the house up because they also have a dem demolitions guy on the team, so they always end the series <laughs> about blasting their house. And uh, That sounds like real fun. <laughs> 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 yeah, I would, uh, would have paid a lot of good money to be on that show. <laughs> but uh, I think for a parody once, I made the same intro video as them and I just copied and made their logo in Photoshop and um, I just put a teddy bear on a stick in the background and I filled it up with the same rocket fuel as I used for the gingerbread houses and I just uh, set it on fire and then I ran that video in slow motion um, but of course the camera back in those days were so poorly so uh, it's really grainy <laughs> and bad but uh, yeah I have some videos of uh, a teddy bear who <laughs> got the the bad end of a stick, <laughs> literally. <laughs> I just keep thinking about the guillotine because I, I, I had an idea. And when you mention it again, I, it popped back into my head. Are you going to share I, it? <laughs> no. We'll see if it, it'll be a guillotine off or not. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'm going to get involved in that. <laughs> Maybe I can judge it. You two can build one and I'll be the judge. <laughs> well, that's, that, that's, an, yeah, that's an interesting concept. <laughs> yeah, and I have a cat. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't have access to anything like that. We have a lot of deer, though. Yeah. <laughs> and on that bombshell, we end this week's half night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic! You got an easy edit there, Havard. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Just snapping it up a bit. Yeah, tighten it in at the corners. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be nice. <laughs> Stop recording mm. now. I feel more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Just pretend that it's not right. recording. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's better. <laughs> anyway, those are the podcasts. Let's get back to that. <laughs>